Hello everybody, this is Andrew, also known as Nature Man. In today's video, we are going to be talking about rooting hybrid poplar cuttings. Uh, this is the OP367 hybrid poplar. This variety is, by some, considered the fastest growing tree on Earth. It has been known to grow upwards of 10 to 12 feet per year. Some other hybrid trees get that claim, such as the hybrid willow or several other hybrid poplar varieties, but they don't match up. Maybe under ideal perfection, perfection, you know, they might grow up to six, eight feet. The OP367, you can do the research on it. It's, research is even done by universities. It is the fastest tree on earth. I, I mean, maybe there's a few other trees that can come close, and I won't argue with that because that's probably true. But overall... Being a poplar, it's a hybrid between the black poplar and the native eastern cottonwood. It can take extremely poor soils. Like, it can practically grow in sewage water. It's grown in polluted sites. It's grown in organic-rich soils. It's grown in acidic, alkaline soils, mountainous, arid climates, swamps, you name it. Yes, they've grown it all the way out in Oregon in the driest, poorest soil, alkaline-ridden soils, successfully. They've also grown it in acidic soils in the southeast and in both locations they both grew up to 10 feet a year vigorously um so this is definitely the tree you want to grow um the op367 hybrid poplar it's very hard to get your hands on nurseries will not sell them generally they won't sell any type of hybrid poplar of any kind and the reason why this is so expensive is that it's mostly used in restoration efforts to help with erosion control by um certain companies and facilities and the governments like the USDA will sometimes plant them but otherwise they are almost never available commercially um, because it's like okay well then we won't be able to sell other shade trees because people want these another thing they'll grow super fast so they may have brittle wood so they're an absolutely horrendous landscaping tree these are not landscaping trees plant them a minimum 50 100 feet from from any type of property so if you have a giant farm with a thousand acres and you need to very quickly, you know, very quickly uh, provide a screen, well then you'd want to use something like this. And I'm going to show you how I propagate it. Um, this is a cutting I got online. You see those little white dots? Those are where the roots would form. Now this is very common on poplar branches and on some deciduous trees. Those little white dots are where the roots would form. And if you obtain cuttings of any kind of poplar and you wish to root them, make sure which side you're doing it. The bud should be facing, uh, sorry, the bud should be facing upwards as it is right here. The bud is facing upwards. So that's where you'd stick it in the soil. Generally, you need at least one or two buds popping out of the soil because these buds would become new branches. Absolutely one bud, preferably two buds facing out of the soil. That is a requirement. Because poplar is in the willow family, Salixaceae, they naturally produce their own rooting hormone. So you do not need to apply a rooting hormone in order to propagate these. Just like you would if you rooted willow, poplar is the same. You just stick it in moist potting medium and it will root. You have to take cuttings when they're dormant. You can't take them when they're leafing out or when they've already leafed out. So you have to do it either in the fall or in the very early spring. It's January here. I'm taking my cuttings. I'm going to root them. Um, but they won't root to spring because I'm going to keep them outside. Um, they'll just stay nice and moist in the soil. And then come April, they'll probably start developing roots. March, April, yeah, depending on the climate, you know. And once spring comes, they'll root. Or if you want, you can start them inside under a grow light and then take them outside after the last chance of frost. Either way works. But it's only January. We have a good like three and a half months until our last frost or maybe four months. So I'd rather not risk rooting them now, but I'm going to get them ready to root and then have them sit outside where they'll stay dormant until they're ready to root in the spring. All right, I'm going to flip the camera. <clears throat> Sorry for the poor lighting. Um, these are some cuttings I've already started, and I'm going to do several in this pot. I've already started one. You can see there's one node or one bud sticking out of the soil. There should be a second one. Yeah, there's a second one right down there. So there's two. See, with this, I have the buds sticking upwards. Stick them in the soil. This is just to get them rooted. Once they've developed vigorous roots in the spring, I'll transplant them. I'm probably going to plant some as by the creek, maybe give some away to friends and grow one or two of them as a bonsai, just because 
I'm doing this for fun, just to learn and see for myself how fast these things grow. I'm not doing it because I have 10 acres I need to screen. I'm doing this 100% educational for fun, and I encourage everyone to do so. There we go. We just The whole idea is just to get them rooted. Here, in fact, I'm going to kind of space them apart so they're not too, too close here. There we go. They should root and leaf out in the spring. And I will do an update as soon as they start to grow in the spring. All right? I will do an update probably a few months from now. This is Nature Man signing off. Bye.